I'm sure you've heard of Bitcoin. If not, check our previous video to enlighten yourself before you watch this video. Now, for those of you that know Bitcoin, we're going to be talking about the second most popular cryptocurrency after Bitcoin, that is Ethereum. Ethereum, unlike Bitcoin and most other virtual currencies, is intended to be much more than merely a medium of exchange or a store of value. Ethereum, on the other hand, describes itself as a blockchain-based decentralized computer network. Welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrency Explained, where we will be discussing Ethereum and what it entails. This episode promises to be exciting, so if you've not yet subscribed, please do so and ensure to turn on the post notification bell icon so you can catch up with other episodes of the series. Let's jump into the gist of today without further ado. Ethereum is a decentralized open source operating system with small contract capabilities. It's a distributed computing platform that enables the creation of decentralized digital applications or dApps. Based on blockchain technology, the Ethereum Virtual Computer, or EVM, is a decentralized virtual machine that can run scripts via an international network of public nodes. Ethereum is also the most popular decentralized software application. It enables you to create smart contracts and decentralized applications with no downtime or interference from third parties. Ethereum gives programmers the ability to design and distribute next-generation distributed apps. Let's give you a quick rundown of how Ethereum has evolved in recent years. Vitalik Buterin, a Bitcoin developer, was the first to define the currency on paper in 2013. Ethereum Switzerland GmbH, a Swiss company, created the first Ethereum software project in 2014. Frontier, the first version of Ethereum, was released in 2015. On March 14, 2016, the planned protocol, Homestead, became the Ethereum network's second largest version upgrade. In May 2016, when the DAO raised a record $150 million in a public sale, Ethereum received the most widespread media coverage. The network was split into two categories in July 2016. Ethereum, or ETH, and Ethereum Classic, ETC. Ethereum rose past $400 in June 2017, marking a 5,001% increase from January 1, 2017. How does Ethereum work? Ethereum is based on a blockchain network, as are all cryptocurrencies. A blockchain is a distributed public ledger that verifies and records all transactions and is decentralized. Everyone on the Ethereum network has an identical copy of the ledger, allowing them to see all prior transactions. It's decentralized in the sense that the network is run and maintained by all of the distributed ledger owners rather than by a single body. In blockchain transactions, Cryptography is employed to keep the network secure and validate transactions. Computers are used to mine or solve challenging mathematical equations that confirm each transaction on the network and add new blocks to the blockchain system. As an incentive, participants are given cryptocurrency tokens. In the Ethereum ecosystem, these tokens are known as Ether or ETH. Ether, like Bitcoin, is a cryptocurrency that can be used to buy and sell goods and services. Its value has risen dramatically in recent years, thereby making it a speculative investment. Users can design apps that run on the blockchain in the same way that software runs on a computer, which makes Ethereum unique. These programs may store and transport personal information as well as manage complex financial transactions. Unlike Bitcoin, Ethereum allows the network to perform computations as part of the mining process, says Ken Fromm, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance's head of education and development. Comparing Ethereum with Bitcoin Bitcoin and Ethereum are frequently compared. While the two cryptocurrencies appear to be very similar, there are a few key differences. Because it hosts an electronic and programmable network with a variety of uses, Ethereum can be regarded as more efficient. The Bitcoin blockchain, on the other hand, was designed specifically for the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. In a nutshell, the Ethereum blockchain strives to fully realize the potential of blockchain, whereas the Bitcoin blockchain is just concerned with cryptocurrency. Another distinction is that Bitcoin has a maximum value. There are a maximum number of 21 million Bitcoins in the world, but Ethereum has no such limit. Albeit the time required to mine one block does limit the amount of Ether that can be mined in a year. In terms of similarity, both the Ethereum and Bitcoin blockchains employ the proof-of-work system and use a lot of energy. Proof-of-work is a method for validating transactions and mining new currency that necessitates a lot of computational power. 
Ethereum, on the other hand, is attempting to run using proof of stake, a low energy validation approach. Ether and Ethereum, what's the difference? Ether is a digital currency that can be used in financial transactions, as an investment or as a store of value. Ether is stored and sold on the Ethereum blockchain network. However, this network offers a variety of other services in addition to ETH. Boaz Avital, Anchorage's head of product, once said, and I quote, These might be basic cash transfers, but they could also be complicated transactions involving anything from asset exchange to taking out loans to purchasing digital art. The Ethereum network is in charge of transaction processing and storage. Data may be stored and decentralized apps can be executed over the Ethereum network. People can host software on the Ethereum blockchain rather than on the Google or Amazon server where the data is controlled by a single company. Consumers have complete control over their data and full access to the app because there's no single authority overseeing everything. Self-executing contracts or so-called smart contracts are perhaps one of the most exciting use cases using Ether and Ethereum. Two parties agree to supply products or services in the future just like they would with any other contract. Lawyers aren't required unlike traditional contracts. The parties code the contract on the Ethereum blockchain and it self-executes and delivers Ether to the relevant party once the contract's conditions are met. The following are some of Ethereum's benefits. It allows you to upload and request the execution of programs. Uptime is guaranteed and the system is DDoS resistant. Ethereum facilitates the creation of a tradable token that can be used as new money or virtual stock. Data storage is persistent and permanent. It creates virtual businesses. It aids in the development of decentralized applications. Ethereum enables you to create fault-tolerant and secure decentralized applications. With its advantages comes its disadvantages. The following are some of Ethereum's disadvantages. Because the Ethereum virtual machine is so slow, it can't be used for large computations. Data storage on the blockchain is expensive. Because each peer in the network must upgrade their node software, bug fixes and app upgrades are challenging. Some applications necessitate user identification verification, which is difficult to accomplish due to the lack of a central authority. Future Scope of Ethereum Ethereum is attempting to shift to the proof-of-stake system, which validates transactions and mines new ETH currencies depending on the user's Ether holdings, as previously stated. The Ethereum platform, which will be known as ETH2, will be revamped as a result of this and other game-changing enhancements. It also expands the network's capacity to help the blockchain flourish. Today, Ethereum is home to a slew of decentralized applications or dApps, and even tokens such as BAT, the basic attention token. In 2015, Microsoft teamed up with Consensus to create Ethereum Blockchain as a Service, EBAAS, on the Azure Cloud Platform. So that's it for today's segment on Cryptocurrency Explained. Consider consulting a financial professional before making any large investments in Ether or other cryptocurrencies. Even if you believe in Ethereum's future, make sure you're investing money that you can afford to lose. If you gained one thing or the other from this video, consider liking, subscribing, and turn on the notification bell for more informative content. And remember, if you've got any questions, you can drop them in the comment box below and we'll get right to it. See you in the next episode of Cryptocurrency Explained.